Coming at you from Scratcher Wolf Studio, it's that time again to rage across the internet. It's your very favorite Werewolf the Apocalypse podcast. I'm your host, Porter. Sit on my left. This is the man with like a spiffy new fucking shirt. That's a, that's a nice shirt, Danny. Thank you. Mr. Daniel Tyson. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sitting to my right, the man who really should put his shirt back on, please and thank you, Tommy Dixon. You don't like what you see? I'm sorry. Should be. And the man with a third shirt-related thing, <laughs> your friend Sir CJ, Sir J, Sir J, Sir J. What's happening, Shirt J? Shirt J. There we go. <laughs> uh, howdy, not much. Just a fun recording day, that's for sure. It, it's an interesting recording day. Yeah, this yeah. man's trying to get another month named after him. He keeps guest starring with us. It's true. How do we do that? I don't know. Is it sagist? <laughs> what, the fuck is it? what is that even? <laughs> <laughs> we'll think of something. Yeah. Well, here's it's, it's going. It's going to the point where it's it's no longer a big deal. It's like oh, it's just CJ again. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the fact that it's that many times and it's no longer a big deal is kind of a big deal. And look, this guy doesn't sit here and bother us about steak knives. So, oh. <laughs> hey, Grant got his steak knife. Yeah, he did. Steak knife. Just one. Well. I'm surprised that didn't get thrown out. We did we did we did, we did send him a straw too, so he could be part of the band. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> How we doing? <laughs> well, we're screwing up the intro, so that was pretty <laughs> interesting. <Yeah. laughs> Shirt J, Sergey. Well, I don't know what happened there, I but saw just. we're just we're running with it. Just. <laughs> We'll see what happens. <laughs> CJ, what happens? <laughs> Fuck, it's okay if you leave. I don't mind. I understand. If this is your first time, go back an episode. Sorry. <laughs> go back an episode? Go back an episode. <laughs> or two. Or two. Depending on, yeah. I don't like this, dating a thing again. The sick, I the said sick thing or is, two, so the, it's either or. Oh, my God. The sick thing is, is we're not like going to retake any of that because no, it's probably not. funny. It is. Remember, remember we were talking the other day about professionalism and how we used to have it? <laughs> We did? We did. Well, we, we would have did. retaken that a couple times oh. if necessary. Before. Yeah, we did. You didn't. Thank you. <laughs> There's still a level of fuck it involved. Oh, well, yeah. No, it's funny. I hope. I hope so. We, too. Think, we think that's funny, it's oddly enough. So either we're fucking sick or you're laughing. So hopefully. Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> Sitting to my left. <laughs> oh, no. The man of many shirts. <laughs> Just one today. Just one. Today. Good God. All right. So, yeah, it's just... <laughs> no, no, it's cool. It's cool. Gentlemen, good to have you back, as always. Absolutely. Always well, good to be here. He took my line. I was going to say... <laughs> Now what do I do? I don't know. Oh no, there's only so many words in the dictionary. <laughs> so, so if this mess is your first one, uh, we are Rage Across the Internet. Your very favorite word of the Apocalypse podcast. That, I mean, I, I said yes. Yes, it's true. You're, you're nice. I like that line. Oh, fair enough. It's a good line. It's been, it's been going on for two out of the three years. <laughs> At I least. still like the line. Welcome back to another episode of Rage Across the Internet. You know, again, yes, your very favorite Werewolf the Apocalypse podcast. Um, today, we are going to have ourselves a little conversation, gentlemen. I like conversations. I would hope so. We've been doing this a couple of years. <laughs> today, we are going to talk the meta. Weird. A little bit. Again, much like uh, a thing we've recently done. You know, with the current, uh, with the newer release... Things have changed, and while we're not discussing those changes today, that's not the thing. It's the game came out a couple, the new edition, five, whatever, came out a couple days ago for us. For us. So, number one, that is not time enough for us to go through the whole book. No. Not time enough for us to make our notes, make our thoughts. That's all in the future. But many things have changed, and because of that, we feel the need to, uh, look, we're not going anywhere. No. You know, we're not. I'd be very, very surprised if we switched up in terms of edition. Well, we're not, I can't see the future. I, I, I doubt mean, it. I was going to say, well, one, I highly doubt it, but like, 
we're, we, we've got a good thing going. And if it's not broke, don't fix it. Those are very wise words, Mr. Tyson. Yeah. So, you know, thank It's weird you. more people don't. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it out loud. But, <laughs> but the reasoning behind these is we will get an influx of new care, new people, hopefully, and we can bring you breathe more life into the older editions well you know it yes but you know it's it's more than that is uh i got a dm from one of our listeners uh over the last course of the last week asking you know given as we we often do like Mm -hmm. if you uh if you have ideas for episodes to contact us and let us know and this was kind of requested to talk about the meta plot because and here's the thing right if you got into werewolf at, at W20, and we did an episode on the lost meta of Revised once upon mm-hmm. a time, and I know Apocalyptic Record tries to reconcile that, and I'm, we're not talking about that either. But if you get into W20, you, you deal with this weird position in the meta where Revised is largely ignored, but somewhat ignored. I mean, again, Apocalyptic Record case by case is it, and we're not, whatever. Yeah. Where a lot of that meta doesn't work or... You know, there, there are questions and, and holes and whatever. And if you went further back to Revised, Revised supposes a level of knowledge because it's a continuation of second edition. Right? So they expect you to already know that shit already. Mm-hmm. And we're going to go to a great example of that um, during this episode. I, I have a really... I didn't discuss this with you guys. I'm, I'm oh, going so to you know, enjoy, enjoy laying some shit down for y'all. But because of that, right, like the meta becomes tricky. And so, you know, the, the, he mentioned, uh, like, hey, what, you know, what about Evan and Albrecht? And like, I don't really know much about these people, because if you start with 20, you're not gonna. Yeah, they're not focal points and they're not like significant, well, they sh- but they should be, should be significant points in this. Well, and that's part of what we're going to be talking about today. Right. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, moving parts to the meta plot, um, characters that are noteworthy that we're going to be talking about, um, maybe locations and uses of the meta, and maybe I don't want to necessarily say how not to use it, but probably some of that too. You know, there's there's a lot of it to go through, and there's good reason to do it. You know, I know there are people who are like, "Well, I don't really the meta." Well, maybe that depends on what you're looking at or how you're using it or how other people in the past have used it and therefore maybe have colored your view of it in a way that maybe isn't so favorable because someone else screwed up before. Hmm. You know, it's like, hey, if your first time going to a baseball game, you got hit in the face with a fly ball, maybe you're not super keen on going to a baseball game. Right? Maybe that. Why is it always? (laughs) I was just asking that in my head. I'm like, why is it always baseball? (laughs) It's always baseball. Not even... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you weren't even trying it just no happened. it just happens like i'm not even into baseball it's the all-american pastime i guess i mean i guess yeah <laughs> i don't make the rules I'm trying to get into baseball at this point maybe we should oh no team rai well we had a jersey at one point yeah, in our did. store yeah that's true we sold one of them too someone's got it somebody got the jersey one i think it reads i think Maybe you just attribute that because we got the shoes, <laughs> get the sneakers, got the sneakers. I think you got a jersey too. That'd be awesome. I know one sold. I was designing it because I wanted it. I thought it was fucking cool. And you never bought and it, and I never bought it because I was like, oh, I'm not very good at designing this. So you took the design over, and then I just forgot. But we sold it anyway, so... My favorite part yeah. about this conversation is the store has been closed for over a year. <laughs> so people are going to be like, oh, there's a... No, there's, there's not. No, nope, sorry. Nope. No. I mean, you can't get it. No. Nope. We, we care about our fans and our community too much to gouge you guys. That's true. So That's why we closed it. <laughs> Prices were getting stupid. No, oh, yeah, the ship costs were getting insane. I think I think it was like 40 bucks for a t-shirt or something yeah. at, at the point. I'm like, I'm not charging. Yeah. No. And we but, wouldn't make any money at that point. No, I think it had to be 40 for us to make money. But again, that's ridiculous. We weren't doing it. No. Yeah. It's like, it'd be nice, but that's not the world I want to live in. We no. didn't want us to be those people. No. I mean, yeah, it would be awesome to open the store back up, but it just doesn't make economic sense. No. Anyway, but yeah, <laughs> back to the meta and when to use, when not to use, who to use, how to use, what to use. 
when to use. Why to use. Damn it. Oh, he got it. That's, yeah. CJ was supposed to chime in with that, though. I mean, you guys kind of got it all. Aside from, like, <laughs> where do you start with the meta plot? Oh, he got the where. Oh. Well, you know, ah. you know, it's a perfectly good question. And where I'd like to start in terms of the discussion is second edition core. Ah. This is the, the comic in second edition core is extremely important for the future of the entire fucking line. I agree. I, I would call it the starting point of Werewolf the Apocalypse. Now, not not to take anything away from first edition, but first edition wasn't a whole lot of books. And while there is meta established and there are plot lines in there, all of that's great. But the Very much rough draft. I would call it a rough draft. And moreover, the, it, it's W2, you know, second edition it is, it begins, and I, and I want to call that the core thorough line of the meta because we open with the first change of Evan Heals the Past. This is a signature Wendigo character. And he goes through his first change. He frenzies and he, he meets a pair of spirals. All right. Like, you know, and, it, and it's the standard story. Okay. Like, I mean, we're not going to give the whole story no, here. Yeah. But, but, but what this story is, it's the story of, you know, him, of course, you know, Cub being chased by spirals. He bumps into a guy running away. And who is this guy? Is a drunk in the park in Central Park named Jonas Albrecht. Hmm. I mean, obviously, we know who that is. But, but if you're reading this comic the for the time, first time, this is just some dude. Mm -hmm. He's got a cool trench coat. He's got some booze and he's looking how red he is. <laughs> oh, man, he's super cool. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, he's got long he's hair and a there. clave and a, he's get the stubble because he's kind of a burnout. Not yet. He's getting there. But what this is, is it's the beginning. Obviously, it's the story of Evan and becoming a gar Garu and learning who he is. Uh, it's the story of how him, Albrecht, and Mari Karba come together to form a pack. And if you're not aware, as you continue through the, the narrative of Where of the Apocalypse, from, from second edition into revised to Apocalypse, we're not talking W20 right now, that's a separate guy. And we're not talking W5 because that's a separate guy in a separate state. <laughs> right? One, one, one's a different, you know, mm -hmm. one's a different sport. It's fair. <laughs> one's a different league, one's a different sport. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Baseball and cricket. That didn't play at all. Even CJ, he's done. He left an hour ago. <laughs> that's CJ. Yep. <laughs> Fucking smart ass. <laughs> you know, different league, different sport. So we're talking here, right? Uh, between, you know, second edition all the way through revised to, to Apocalypse, the final book. Right. Is the story, you know, we, we deal with this pack, which becomes known as the King's Own Pack, because not for nothing, Jonas Elbrick, through the, the novel The Silver Crown, which is also a tie into the Rage Card game, by the way. Little Neat. fun. Didn't know that. Yeah. Becomes the King of the Garu. Gets the Silver Crown, and you, you see the art with him later on. Like, he's got the fucking, the, the circlet, the silver circlet around his head, which is over an eye patch that he didn't have before putting the crown on. I, I swear. <laughs> I don't know how you get an eye patch under something that's fused to your skull, but yeah, that's a little bit of a feat. <laughs> no, it's on his head. The eye patch. It's, <laughs> it's, not, it's not maybe the artist didn't know. I mean, that's entirely possible. Yeah. And you know, maybe I'm misremembering, and he did put an eye patch on first. I really, I, I don't think so. Mm. <laughs> but this is the point. Right. As you, as you look at this, right. This is the beginning of it. This is where Evan met Albrecht and Mari. The three of them form this pack. We move over in the meta till we get the silver, the silver crown novel. How these people, you know, the, the, this, this pack grows over time and fine. And he becomes the king of the Garu. And again, the pack grows and this is him leading the nation. And you follow the, the, the narrative further where he snuffs out the seventh generation. And he's making changes in, in the Garu Nation for the better. Right. Right. And we move on to the legends of, of him and Zizek for the apocalypse. Like, he's the last guy in Born King. And, you know, he's fated to, to die in battle with Zizek. You, we, we have all these elements. You know, the Silver Fang tribe book for Revised is what's that about? The narrative of that book is about him 
going to Russia to learn the old ways, you know, the ways from the old country and learning a, a secret about that tribe. It's something that I think gives so much more character to the tribe, you know, in the, the nature of the mm-hmm. madness. But again, even the through line of that book is about Albrecht learning more about the nation and you're standing, which I hate that you're standing next to the king of the guard. Like, I think it's too close to the sun, you know, mm-hmm. but that's, that's on me. That's not, it's a good, it's a perfectly fine try book. I'm not, I'm not talking, it's just fine. But, but again, this is such an important lore character. And if you didn't start, you know, yeah, you go to, yeah, you go to W20 and there's the comic in W20 and Albrecht's in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. but if you didn't have W2 to read that comic first, you're not going to know any of this. Like, this, yeah, the significance of him is greatly diminished if you don't have all of that prior knowledge. And the fact of the matter is, you know, again, Revised supposes you already have the knowledge in 2 because Revised is a continuation for 2. For fuck's sake, they replaced the comic. I mean, they don't do comics in Revised. Mm-hmm. Right? That gets tricky when you're talking about tribe books, right? Because, like, the first tribe mm-hmm. book is a second edition book. Right. So tribe book one is a second edition book. Tribe book two is a, is a revised book. <laughs> tribe book, but tribe book two, they, in the revised books, the you know, third edition books, which again, second tribe book, third edition book, fuck. <laughs> there are no comics in those. It's just the legends of the Gyrus stories. And they're still cool. But. Sure. And I mean, if you go back to our, our silver record episode, where we talk about the through line there and the story, in second edition, Mm -hmm. right? Well, that is kind of replaced in revised with a a grown Evan taking a new care, a new changer, a fresh cub under his wing. So it kind of goes full circle from second edition, Evan's the first change, to an revised Evan all grown up, going, come here, kid, let me show you the ropes. See, I liked it. I liked that full circle like that. I think that's cool. I love it. I thought it was really neat. But if you don't have that prior knowledge, it means fucking nothing. Right. It's lost. Exactly. Yeah, it's like I can confirm that it means nothing or you know none of this if you're just going off the 20 books. And I the, was. And see, exactly. And that's, a, and that's why we're doing this episode. Yeah. And that's I, why this is happening. And I remember our meta, our lost meta plot episode. Back in... Back oh, don't the, date it. <laughs> back in the day. No, yeah, it was back, back in back, the back old in the studio. Day. Yeah, old studio. Oh, that's true. And, yeah, and we talked about, like, if you didn't have prior knowledge, none of this makes sense. And because of those comics and now the new ones, what's lost and what is retconned. Okay, yeah, retconned, maybe misunderstood. Yeah, yeah you did that too. But, you know, that's that episode, if you were curious. Definitely go listen to that one. That was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah, yeah. That I lost the plot for a second. No, you're absolutely right, Danny, because that was an episode about how when W20 took over, mm-hmm. it cut out the meta. The idea was is it was taking the meta from second edition in the in the modern day. Right. So it cut out the entire revise, and there was a lot of shit there. Yeah, we, we called it the... The lost meta. I, I thought it was like the, the time, the meta law, or some, 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 something the time lost or something dumb. I don't remember it was. That was the lost meta. The lo- okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's enough. The meta of the time forgot. No, nope, it was the lost meta. <laughs> the meta that Danny forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all of the ones, I forgot that one. Right. The, yeah, the fucking title that Danny forgot. <laughs> He's going to confirm. I promise you. We're going to have to pause the episode and ruin our momentum because fucking Frylock Baby has to have it. I'm just going to move on. You can be in the background <laughs> looking this mm-hmm. up. <laughs> yes, Danny, prove me right. <laughs> um. oh, yeah, it was just gonna go on to like the so you know the second edition it's all about a king's own pack they're coming together and like rising up and what was it revised is when evan now has the mentor role for this first changer oh no it's like that's an interesting thing that i never do about like i knew the characters by name but so far this is a interesting little art to see uh, yeah, it's a tie. We uh, we both won. He added to it in post. I, not, I didn't. I, I had always <laughs> called it the lost meta. The lost meta plot or the meta plot that W20 forgot. Okay. Yeah. So we so we tied. Fine. Yeah, here in, like, in how second edition it's about Evan and the King's Own pack, their rise and forming now with 
have uh, revised, where now Evan is taking on that mentor role for a first changer, is it a first changer of any significance or just him in a mentor role? I believe it's just him in a mentor role. Um, I don't... Okay. I honestly don't remember... Did they specify who the kid... I, I don't remember who the kid is. I honestly don't remember who the kid is. Well, My focus shows, there... That shows right there how much significance that is compared to what the meta was prior. There's like not as much there to breathe in significance to you to remember that. Well, maybe, but I think I think maybe the worthier part, at least the worthier part for me, right, was the fact that, hey, it's Evan all grown up. Okay. Like for yeah. me, I was excited. I remember getting that, that, cause that's the thing is I was here. You gotta, you guys forget, or you guys don't forget, but to remind everybody, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, since the, mm, I've been here the whole time. Yep. Since second edition launched. Yeah. Like it, but like immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember getting my limited edition revised core book. Limited edition. Huh? That's right there. It came with I, the art book. Uh, and no, a, yeah, and an awesome slipcover, yeah. Um, and opening that thing and going through it, you know, and I'm looking through the pictures, and again, I'm bummed that there's no comic. Where there's no comic? Oh my god! Oh my god! And then I get to the art. It's this awesome fucking picture of this Wendigo. He's got the ghost shirt, you know. The, oh yeah, the ghost know, is so bad. And he's, and he's reaching his hand. He's got the spear in his hand. He's reaching his hand out to this cub, and you got the the webbed city in the background. And I'm like, this looks fucking awesome. And I look over, and it says, Evan. I'm Evan Heals the Past. Shit, look at Evan. You know, and you flash back to the, the comic in second edition where he's this scrawny kid with yeah. the oblong head, you know. Yeah, it was like a nerdy kid. Yeah. He's so white, he's clear, and that's important, too, but not in the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> Which just in so far as to prove that it's not. Yeah. No, I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's... And I remember, as I'm reading it, you and I were laughing. He comes back from, like, visiting an ancestor spirit. And he jumps in. He's like, Hoka, hey! And I look it up, and that was like a... Um, no, it's a real war cry. It's a war cry. But if you don't know that, it sounds like stroke talk. Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. It was really cool looking it up. It was like, oh, no shit. Yeah, that, we used to joke about that until we learned that it was like, a, like, like oh, no, okay, that's... No. All right, fine. Yeah. I remember joking, but like, no, this is not a joke anymore. It's fucking serious. But that's neither here nor <laughs> there. You know, when you fucking the Winnego are awesome. Great. But that's, you know, it's, it was that through line. So I think it was less a, a commentary on the meta of, or on like who this new guy is in Revise. It's just that the seeing Evan all grown after up. all those years all grown up, it was, it, that was the worthier part. It overshadowed whoever this kid was. Yeah, it was and it might have been someone important, but I don't remember because all I remember is how awesome it was to see adult Evan. It'd be like seeing, you know, in like an X-Men comic in like in past, here's this little kid learning as telekinesis or something. And then next pa- or next book, oh, it's fucking Professor X in a wheelchair. Oh shit, that was Professor X the entire time impressive all right okay yeah yeah and so you don't care about the kid that he's teaching now more that like oh shit it yeah, you're just you're happy, to see, you're happy to see chuck again <laughs> chuck <Yeah. laughs> you know and and let's say you know let's let's be clear there's i mean you tell you look at the meta you know what is what is meta plot you know it, it's what's going on in the world it's the world it's what's going on it's how to breathe life into the world of the game you're trying to play. Sure. It's, it's, it's official canon. Right. It's it's the Shadow Curtain. It's the War of the Amazon. It's Albrecht in the Silver Crown. You know, it's it's Pentex. It's premium oil turning into Pentex. And the the, the, the loss of the seventh generation, the Shadow Curtain, the Week of Nightmares. It's, it's all of these things, these events that are happening in the world to help build this world for you to use. Right. But again, and I say official canon because these are really, it's not specific storyteller canon because you right, can use is, all that you want of course and and but, you should you should build your own with with the building blocks you know great. um we we talk again talking about albrecht you know this was a guy who was you know his grandfather was the king king albrecht of the northeast protectorate which is like new england largely yeah <laughs> it's it's funny is that's a sept in an area that has not gotten like ever gotten enough detail like they talk about it in the Silver Crown, and it's mentioned. I, I believe it's mentioned in Rage New York, and that's about it. Hmm. 
<laughs> like I remember, I remember I had to scrounge to find the name of the protectorate. Wow. And then I find out it's the, it's just, it's just the scepter, the Northeast protectorate. I'm like, really? I was so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> like i mean it's kind of on the nose okay i won't forget it at least <laughs> it's true <laughs> but like you know it, there he was like, he was just a member of that court and because of the you know the silver fang madness which again blew up over time at the originally was just morning kill his father jacob morning kill or his grandfather excuse me was old and kind of crazy as happens to silver fang sometimes and he would, it would be if he found someone he thought would be a threat to him in court, he would exile them. So, and this is even in the flashback of the comic, one day, good old Jonas, he brings home uh, a Nexus Crawler carcass. That, that's how that works somehow. Just fucking run with it. And says, look at this trophy I did. And Morning Kill goes, screw you. You're going to try to kill me. Fuck off. You're exiled. Cliff notes here. Yeah, I must say, those are cliff notes right there. But it's about it. Yeah. He was threatened. Yeah, he felt very threatened. So he fucking disowned him and exiled him. And ever since, Albrecht was a drunk in Central Park, hanging out with Fengi and Mother Larissa and all them. And then he rose to power. But there you go, right? Until he meets Evan, which sends him on his little redemption arc. And now they're a pack together. And boom, all of a sudden, King Morningkill is assassinated. Hmm. Which leads us to the Silver Crown, where he's the last living relative of Jacob Morningkill, and there's someone else vying for the throne, and that someone else might be a little uh, might, crazy too. No, might be a little wormed up. Ah, he's oh, a little I'm suspect. Right. Mm. And like, I don't want to give the everything's away, mm-hmm. but there's a level of right. Right. So it's like here's the like if you can get your hands on the Silver Crown, read the Silver Crown, please. But you know, so the cliff notes here. It's, now it's between those two, and who's going to win? And well, spoiler alert, you know, fucking Albrecht does. He's, he's spoiler in the book. Mm-hmm. Fucking, he's on the cover. What do you want? Uh, <laughs> With his eye patch? No. Well, that's later. I'm not sure he is on the eye on the cover. Actually, I mean, I believe it's him, but it's in Krynos. So it's like fucking. It could be anybody. That's fair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Logic. We would assume, but <laughs> right. he's not wearing a name tag. I don't know what to tell you. a <laughs> name tag. Hello, my name is. Right. And then even then, like, so the char- some of the characters in those that book goes on to do things. And then, we, you know, there are there are other novels that tie in, like Breathe Deeply, which uh, takes place predominantly in the Amazon. Again, another big meta plot scenario. Breathe life into, like, Gol Gol. And- Interestingly enough, while a big part of the Amazon, not part of Breathe Deeply. Really? Mm. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Huh. Yeah. That is crazy. Now, Breathe Deeply is a story of the Severed Arm Pack. Oh, yeah, Russian. Russian the One Arm Pack. Oh, yeah, Russian One Arm. Yup. My favorite silver fang. <laughs> That's a fun pack, and I, like, I really only gravitated because, you know, Jaeger Gorefest has one arm. But, like, like oh, no. He's got both arms. But just one is a weapon. Yeah, now. one's a weapon now. <laughs> Fetished <laughs> into a club. But, you know, Breathe Deeply, another good little read. And again, little, because both of those books are like those tiny paperbacks, like that can fit in your pocket. Mm-hmm. And they're not very, like, they're not they're not long reads. You, you can do these pretty quickly if you can get your hands on them. But I recommend them both. You know, yeah, it follows the Severn Arm Pack, you know, um, and newcomer Peter Ward. Which again, I don't want to get into all the specifics. Right. So I really enjoyed that one. You know, it's those characters. Number one, also kind of a rage tie-in. All of those characters appear in rage cards. Yeah. And in that, they all appear in not all actually, not all of them. Brennan does not. Oddly enough, there's no Brennan rage card, and he's not in Warriors of the Apocalypse. Hmm. Huh. I wonder if that was on purpose. I, I do not know. Actually, if there, there might be a Rage Card in a later edition that I don't know about. But he's not in Warriors of the Apocalypse. Fair. Sad. It's a little weird. But, you know, and that's that's an interesting group because you got the you got the Glasswalker, the Fianna, the Silverfang, uh, the Stargazer. And then they have a, a Bastet contact because they are in the Amazon. It's, it's a really interesting group of characters. And again, to have them transcend right they're not mm-hmm. just in breathe deeply they're not just they're in the rage card sure but they're in rage the rage across the amazon furthering your meta plot even right 
Right. Furthering the meta plot. For, yeah, yeah. Furthering the meta plot. I saw what you were doing. Like I was, I was gonna try to save you from the I appreciate it. We're gonna further the meta plot further. Yep. With yeah, the furthering. That's, with that's, the fur- that's exactly what I was going to say. Yes. <laughs> I, I say I knew I was and gonna, I appreciate thank you for the save. Yeah, yeah, through the life raft. I got you, Bo. <laughs> but without all this stuff, you're not gonna be able to breathe the life into that Amazon. Well, and, that, and that's the thing, is that's the, the importance is these characters can help enhance the meta. And and is a is a storyteller, right? You read these you read these books. And you're like, neat, I can use these characters and have them appear. And there's a level of which you want to do that and a level of which you don't. You know, um, there's such a thing as leaning too hard into it. Oh, yeah. You know, you don't want to be best friends with Albrecht. That's, don't that's, do that's, that. Don't do that. He's yeah. got better things to do. Right. And that's the thing is those characters mm-hmm. have paths to walk. And if you want to bump up against it, that's one thing. We'll, we'll go back to uses in a bit. But, you know, yeah, you have the War of the Amazon there. You know, go, go fangs first and showing up and taking over and <laughs> leading that charge yeah right and slowly doing a level of unification and working with the pharaoh native to the region for the sake of the war that's some awesome mm-hmm. shit mm-hmm. yeah because he sees the significance of it and the importance and without someone taking that charge and, and holding that lead it's lost mama thanks first didn't raise no fool <laughs> and- <laughs> nice one thing that I just thought about because of that, you know, with Gogol setting up those alliances with some of the Pharah in the Amazon, because that's in meta plot now, because that is canon, that gives you a little bit of information. Like if you wanted to run something in, say, the Amazon or Amazon War, now you know, yeah, no, it's not impossible for the pack to have a Bostet or maybe even a Macaulay contact, possibly a player. Versus, you know, if you were going into just the other location that doesn't have that information, it might be a little bit more of a stretch. No, 100%. I mean, exactly. And another great example is the incidents with Blacktooth and the Ahandi. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we talk about our... <laughs> I, I love I love how Tom has just tilted his head to the side like the confused dog. Like, yeah, how are you going to phrase this, Porter? <laughs> I'm waiting for it. <laughs> What's the plan, buddy? Disinterest okay. in Zoo Force games. Okay, that's fair. You know, from from uh, how the from Saber I have the meta that this doesn't work outside of the Amazon. Most, most situations, it right. doesn't work. I want to play a Bastet with these guys. Well, you know, we're going to have, yeah, the, the idea of we're going to have the Kitsune in two get a Fenris and a Silver Fang and a Naga, a Nuisha and three girl, and they're going to be a pack together in a Cairn in New York City. No, they're not. No, they're not. That's, that's, no, but, but there's a reason we bring up this whole meta thing here. Cause, right. But see, yes, <laughs> you want to play a Bastet. Let's look to an Ahadi game. Let's look to the Amazon where you can do that without jumping through hoops. Right, because mm-hmm. that's part mm-hmm. of the meta. You can do that with that meta. Or go play a Beast Courts game. Yes, or a Beast Courts game. Fucking Hengi Okai. But, you know, I mean, I want to focus more on like a Hondi or. It's because fair. because those are driven more by meta plot. Right, right. Where I would almost argue that Hengi Okai is more of kind of like a spin off kind of deal. I, I yeah. agree. Like it's so much its own thing. Yeah. Hence why we did different episodes for it. Yes. Exactly. And even we, we look at the Ahandi and they state it and we were reading it and they state it right off the bat. They're only joining forces because they have to. They don't have a choice. They're not going to be able to take down Blacktooth if they don't do this. But in the meta, Blacktooth was taken down and the Ahandi persists. That's part of it. Mm-hmm. To try to keep this going after the Alliance of Necessity is over. Right. And that can make some for some compelling gameplay. But again, these are things that the meta brings forward. You you can go, well, yeah, well, I could just make up my own reason. And, you know, that ridiculous pack grouping I made up for the New York thing. I could just do that. Well, you could. I do. Sure. But you don't, you don't have a lot of the background of the meta to help drive that story forward. Right. You're going to be creating everything from scratch all the time and there's, there's a, a lot, lot of work yeah there's so many hoops a lot of work to do you don't have the meta behind that to drive it right and you know i have said for ever i guess uh-huh. is you know what is what is a tabletop game right it, it's lore, lore and its system. systems if you remove the lore mm. or ignore the lore you you have just fucked off half the game 
Mm-hmm. If you change up all the lore and all the systems, this is a different game entirely. <clears throat> um, oh, well, that's the thing, though. You. Is, it's, well, yeah, bless you. Excuse me. Excuse bless me. You. But that's the thing, though. So all you have is systems. So you're running this game of that colorful pack of changing breeds right there. What happens when they run into a pack of Garu? Guess what? You probably don't survive. Well, and that's the thing too is if like, but if you're ignoring the meta, then none of it matters anyway. That's fair. So, so which is why we're gonna we're just stick back on course, you know, <laughs> like the importance of it. I mean, that is why we're here. I mean, for Metapod as well, it's it's one of those things that like, yeah, no, this Metapod is here to help you understand what's going on in the world at the time, but at the same time, it also helps with your settings because you know as point out there's the point where like the seventh generation gets wiped out pentex is formed and everything you're going into the later edition or the earlier settings they also have their own sections of like hey here's what the meta plot is at this point well, wild west there's that whole section about the storm eater how it came about everything but of course none of the albrich or you know farah stuff from like the ahondis in there so it's got to cover it in some way like well, i, I- I love that you brought up the storm eater because that, that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, not only is that meta plot, but it's kind of a set piece for the whole, what the, the entirety of where of the wild west. Yeah. It's so fucking important to what's going on in the era that that game is happening. Cause that's like the big bad right there. Right. Which is so great that you brought it up, you know? And then like, uh, you look at again, uh, more, more examples as you go down the chain, with the narrative through the the additions, mm-hmm. I mean, we take us when we get into third, and, and it it ties in with stuff like the rising of hunters, the imbued. I always forget that's what their name was. You know the the appearance of the red star and Thelios, the eye of the worm, mm-hmm. that showed up in the Umbra, and then later showed up in the realm. That's a yeah. big. That's a big thing. Well, it was well, such a huge push of that meta. Mm-hmm. It threw all of the world. Exactly, of I was going to say, with all. Yeah, world welcome to the week of nightmares. Which was the, you know what? Go go ahead, CJ, because you you know this, and I'm going to uh, fumble through it. Now let's take a small step back from like werewolf perspective, because some of the big stuff going on in the week of nightmares was a one of like these. No, what were you going to say? No, I was going to say it was uh, the rising of, and I, I forget the name, which is why I totally uh, hated it to you because it, it was very loose okay. centric. <laughs> yeah, it was the rising of a antediluvian, aka a vampire who is like, I think two steps removed from Cain, the first vampire. So that's a big fucking deal, and it took a lot of the world of darkness coming together just to take it down. <laughs> That's how big of a threat this guy was, and it was causing basically a miniature apocalypse. Understandably so. Oh, I remember in a world of a world of rage, or or Question rage mark? across rage the world, across. <laughs> one of those two. Because all these years, I still I still can't. Figure There's a still. lot of lore, dude. <laughs> that talks about the week of nightmares. It's a revised book. It's one with the Margrave and his pack mm-hmm. on the cover, which we'll get to the Margrave in, in a bit. It talks about the week of nightmares, and I believe, and I'm, and I'm paraphrasing, but it talks about how, like, it won. It was it was such a big deal on such a huge scale, and so important to cover up that at one point, like, two vampires, a mage, a wraith, and a garu were in the same office shredding documents, and everyone left without incident. What mm-hmm. the fuck? Wow, that's a big deal, right? So, well, where this antediluvian was, I think there was like at least four or five different packs however many gangs of vampires and mages getting ready to drop spirit nukes is the canon word, I believe. Spirit nukes, so spirit bombs. <laughs> All on the same battlefield. That's insane. Yeah, it was some crazy shit. But again, this all uh, this week of nightmares also coincided. Like, this was some end time shit. They were leading to it. This was mm-hmm. related to the coming to the Shining of the Red Star. And actually, before we get to that canonically, Chronologically, we talk about the Shadow Curtain, the rise of Baba Yaga, and had the spiritual barrier that was placed down around her territory in in <laughs> the I think like the decade yeah. of just oh, it was fresh hell. Yep. We we talked we wanted to do an episode about this for a we, while, but we're not sure. Still. Yeah, we, we probably talked, will still. Just we did talk about it in the, the Lost Meta 
or the well, time. Sure, but we were talk, we've talked forever about doing an actual episode on it uh, just and really one, yeah. breaking down, but I'm not sure. Not the point. But again, another big deal, the rise of Baba Yaga, her getting taken down. You know, there was a, I mean, one of these great dragons that showed up. <laughs> you know, there's a list of cairns that got fucked off during mm-hmm. that time. You know, um, oh, I mean, you, know that you couldn't really do right. anything about it. You know, it talks to, you know, stuff about like a, a character from one of the other novels ends up showing up in the meta of the end of the shadow curtain. And again, I don't want to too much because no, if, you, if you have a chance to check this shit out, you know, it's, it's cool stuff. And, you know, yeah, we go back to, to Anthelios, which also, by the way, coincided with the birth of the perfect metis. I was wondering if you're going to bring that up. Well, you kind of have to. It's, and, it's and meta. It's, I mean, it is. It's written. It is meta. That's, that's kind of why, because it was not only the significance, because obviously it's very significant, but the timeline from it is wondering, is why I was wondering. Well, how so? It's just, where is the end time from there? Well, really, it's the beginning of the end. And that's, that yeah, kind of yeah. the purpose of the Wasn't that the signaling of it, basically? Well, in Thelios, you know, in Thelios Rising, and, you know, the first half of Rage Across the Heavens mm-hmm. is essentially a book game, but it's about that perfect Metis. Uh-huh. You know, this Metis cub that is born to seemingly be without deformity. And everyone's after it. You know, the Spirals want it to kill it because they think it's going to be a champion for Gaia. And some of the Gaians got to save it because they think it's going to be a champion for Gaia. But then some of the guys want to kill it because they think it's going to be a harbinger of the worm. And some of the spirals want to save it and raise it because they think it's going to be a harbinger of the worm. Mm. Everyone has different opinions, at least the few people who know about it. And everyone's in the idea of that book game is everyone's after this fucking cub that is in your hands. Yeah, the book game. And that's all that game is about then at that point. Well, sure. Unless... I mean, in there, you know, you look through it and they, actually it's, it's one of the ones I feel is, is done better than some of the others because it does leave plenty of options, including those of you not carting around this fucking baby for the rest of your career in werewolf. Okay. <laughs> I liked your version. Your, I mean, your canon. Well, and it's one of, you know, a version of mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Is where one of the NPCs kind of lone wolf and cub. Yeah. And he does that with the thing. And, you know, he goes off in his fun samurai adventures with a baby Krynos in a backpack. <laughs> neat, <laughs> neat and fun. But well, I think it's more because I like that. It's one of my favorite NPCs of the game. But fair besides enough. the point. Yeah. yeah it, it becomes a very different version. And not what we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. But we can say we can run back to that again in a, in a minute or two. <laughs> but, you know, that deals with that. And there are other repercussions. You know, again, that coincides with the rising of the imbued, um, allegedly. This... <laughs> <laughs> yep i'm not reading that whole i'm, I'm not I, that's why it's funny uh, allegedly <laughs> yeah it's also signifies the end of morgaru in that original meta there are no more garu born after that point after anthelio shows up over yeah i remember that part like even meta still, time. yeah like even metas are still born at that point wow. there are no more new garu it's everyone who's going to be in this battle is already here I mean, is that due to Luna being stuffed out, kind of? Because it's Thelios Rose, and I don't know. No, it has nothing to do with Luna. I'm just, I'm just wondering if that not, would not Helios. Oh, right. I'm thinking of Helios. Jeez. Scratch no, it, it's just this is the... And Thelios appeared. Fucking the end times is here. And that was also a through line is the idea that every Garu who was going to have a role in the end times was already born. Mm. And so to have no more births after that point that through line, right, really hits the head that the end is coming. Yeah. Right? Like, we're not fucking around anymore. It's not this nebulous thing that someday. No, 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 no. It's here. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it like that. I thought that was cool because, again, you're not going like a, like a John Connor style here where you got to go back in the future or back in the future, back to the past to go save who's supposed to be saving you in the future. There's none of that shit. Mm-mm. Everyone who's here, that's who's going to be fighting this fight. Yep. No one ever said anything about winning or losing, but it's who's in that fight. Right, and that leads to Apocalypse itself, to the book and to the concept, because that was the end of the line. Mm-hmm. But... <laughs> and, then, and then W20? Well, but see, W20, that's a different thing, because they took... They ignored that revised canon. Because what are you going to do? Right? Like... It, <laughs> 
I get it, it, why it's they been did it. yeah, it's been a handful. Here's your end. Right. Let's roll that back because you can't do anything after the end. Exactly. Like it's it ended. The yeah. world is over. <laughs> we can't <laughs> rewind. Let's back to much of a post apocalypse you can go with uh world being un and, but that's the thing, too, is like, I mean, you could make that argument, but that would have been a different game because of how badly you would have removed the meta. Yeah. It's just a different thing entirely. And I mean, it wouldn't be fair to call that werewolf the apocalypse. Again, I, I get why they did it, but. No, I was fine with it, with the idea of taking that second edition canon mm-hmm. and just moving for like, oh, no, it's just it's all happening now. You know, that said, they did. I mean, they did a lot of things with the canon of W20. <laughs> and not all of them, I think, were great ideas. Again, we go back to, and I mentioned it somewhat recently, I believe, is the they added a tenant to the Prophecy of the Phoenix. <laughs> that that, that mm-hmm. basically said, hey, it'll be all right in the end. It's fine. Mm. So now instead of a warning about the future, it becomes it's, a... Just, yeah, cool. don't worry about it. Yeah, it's, it's, fucking, it's just going to You'll happen. be fine. Yeah, just grab yeah. a Mountain Dew. It's cool. <laughs> don't worry. Be happy. Just go have a beer. I think I think both of those things were actually in the language of that that last part. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. Just grab a Mountain Dew. Let's <laughs> <laughs> well, think about that. Without the meta, what about like the Croton Fall? Exactly. The, the the Lost Tribes at all. Yeah. The the War of Rage. All of that is, and and it affects things. You know. Um. Let's look at. You know. We're talking about. You know those changes, and but but the prophecy of the phoenix itself, as as a set piece to help explain how we're in the shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, without a paddle, right? You know, for, again, forget the additions in twenty, but like that's there all by itself to go. Yeah, fucked. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, it's all stuff to push the narrative forward, and you can't have the narrative without that kind of meta. Well, you know, there are people who are like, you know, oh, we want to, you don't have to be, you don't have to rub up against it. And I guess maybe that's where we pivot into the, like the usage, mm-hmm. you that know, works. is no, you shouldn't be friends with Jonas Albrecht. That man has so many things to do and talking with your pack <laughs> is not one of them. <laughs> it, it, it reaches, you know, it, it flirts with Mary Sudom. Yeah. Like maybe... Maybe at one point while your pack's passing through the Sept of the Green, you mention the drunk in a trench coat. No, that too. You could mention that, yeah. That could happen. You know, in my games, I, I prefer, you know, I prefer the early 90s this is adding. And I like to have it set before Morning Kill's assassination. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For a couple reasons. Like, number one, I just, I, I, I don't like Elbrecht yeah. as a character. Main so I just want to leave him as Main a character syndrome. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to leave him as a stupid drunk in the park. <laughs> I'm just being petty. But no, no, the real answer is because that's a major event. Yeah. And I want that to shake things up for you guys, for the world. Right. You I, know? I can see it that way. Because if we're playing the game and that's the time setting that you use, that's going to happen. Whenever I'm ready for it. Yeah, yeah. whenever you're ready, yeah. And when that shake things up, that turns your game into something a little different, but... Well, it will factor. Because, like, check this out. And we're going to give hypotheticals here so I don't give away anything that may sure. or may not be happening. And mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, Morning Kill being assassinated is akin to the president's been shot. Yes. It, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll do JFK as the, you know... Yeah, sure. Because I don't want the government to be confused about anything I might be saying. Because <laughs> the FBI is listening to our podcast you right Fucking now. they could be. You never know. You know what? I played World yeah. of Warcraft for years with a fed. Ooh. So you never know. That's awesome. Guy was a torn druid. You never know. <laughs> anyway. You said president, so they're all listening now. Right. Like, you know, so Kennedy, for example, because it's a thing that already happened and I had nothing to do with. <laughs> It wasn't around yet. They're still definitely still listening. That's fine. If, thanks for listening to the podcast. You, you could go to our yes. Ko-Fi and uh, <laughs> KO. Is the time for that? Yeah, Slash you, across the internet. You can afford it. <laughs> yeah, you guys with your yeah, you can do it. Come on, tell your friends. Put some taxpayer dollars there. It's, your friend in the NSA on it. Hey yo. Hey. Hashtag not sponsored. But <laughs> but open to shilling. <laughs> <laughs> We can be bought. I absolutely, we can be bought. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, no, but sorry, for real. back to it. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's an event akin to the president being shot, right? Right. So that's going to have ripples. Oh, big time. I'm not suggesting that you guys were there at the sept when it happened, or you were at all tied to it, and you shouldn't be. No. Because silly. However, it does present ripples. Now, there's suddenly a power vacuum and a little bit of panic, and what does it mean around that protectorate? Suddenly, Morning Kill's dead, right? Uh Uh-huh. Well, now, nobody's watching. So, what if this sept over here in New England, you know, in, in Boston... In, in Foxborough, let's be specific, Okay, decides to take a push into Rhode Island, knocking the bone gnawers or glass walkers or whoever's in charge, probably glass walkers in charge over there. That place is really mobbed up. Um, <laughs> yeah, Crime Town, season one. Yeah. Super mobbed up. So, you know, they're going to push into Rhode Island and, and take over from the glass walkers, which would never have been allowed while Morning Kill was, was alive. I was going to say, yeah, but exactly. if Morning Kill was still there, it wouldn't have happened. Right? I mean, think about the grab for power from other tribes, even. Exactly. Oh, it, what if one of your uh, Sept Elders is a Silver Fang and gets called back to the old country? Yeah, even that. Or even to that Sept to help reinforce whatever. Mm-hmm. Exactly. What about the, uh, the botched encounter you guys had? You guys is... Not you, specifically. Yeah, the hypothetical. You. Yeah. With that Silver Fang Sept, which led to an inquiry and your Cairn's defenses, which suddenly totally screws you. But now those inspectors aren't going to make it because the king died. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Lucky. Like, yeah, the ripples on that kind of shit, right? It doesn't, you don't have to be that close to it. And maybe you shouldn't be that close to it. But you should feel the ripples of it. Right. Yeah. It's stuff that's going on in the world. Did yep. the president getting did the grassy knoll event <laughs> affect you personally? Event. No, but it's a major event. Yeah, uh, I and love he, hearing that. Yeah, some of those repercussions should have consequences. How direct? I mean, up to you, up to storyteller, but they're going to be there, right? There is a war in the Amazon. It's a great place for mm-hmm. cubs to go to try to get some renown and some fame. They think. Mm, until you're on tour for a long right. time. Like, it's largely probably a good place to get your face fucked off. but <laughs> Or be stuck there for years. But you totally get some renown if you survive. That's true. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing without the meadow and how important it is. You don't even have these important locations. Right. That's a big one. Like, how do you know where the Sept of the Green even is? Which without one? Mother Larissa. Huge meta character. I love Mother Larissa. She's great. Her and Shaky Mac and Shaky Spotlight Mac. and, you know, all the cast of characters at the Sept of the Green, which is, of course, the Sept in Central Park. A mm-hmm. significant location. Yes, it, it's arguably the Bonar Sept. And you go, well, Porter, it's not the one in, it's not the one in the Cameron book. The fuck you talking about, dummy? You know Why? Because it was featured in W2 Core. Really? Hmm. I don't want to say one as well. I'd have to go double check. I don't remember. Oh, we're not talking about first edition. So, But that's that's a good point. We're not talking about first edition. But yeah, the Sept of the Green is detailed extremely well Mm -hmm. in in Werewolf 2 Core. Which is a bummer. Because if, again, they suppose the knowledge. If you don't have that, you don't have the write-up on the Sept of the Green. Mm. canonically a super important fucking cairn right you have again i mentioned these characters you know shaky mac and fengi and mother larissa (sighs) and timmy and simon gentle you know there's a lot of awesome fucking characters that are hanging out again in this super great location (laughs) and it's just sitting in that book (laughs) i love it is that meta with the red tail on there Spotlight, Spotlight, yeah. Oh, Spotlight. Okay, his name was Spotlight. Okay, yeah. never mind. I just love that. that he's just just there. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's in the zoo by day and then does whatever the fuck he wants to by night. Yep. Well, I'm getting three square meals and they're feeding. Hey, why not? Oh, that's not. That's not what he's I, He's not excited for the, oh, it's some slop. some monkeys throw slop and kibble at me three times a day. And I, obviously, they're very I lucky that. I don't rip their throats out. 
<laughs> probably has a few of them. Oh, he's so much hate. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, obviously I know that. I just I make the joke because I think Spotlight's a fucking cool character too. No, that's perfectly fair. And that's the thing is they are cool characters. These are cool characters that you could use. And, and I, I wanted to and back around to that too. Mm-hmm. You know, as a storyteller, the idea to be able to take these characters that you've read about or seen in other places and use them, that's fun. Yeah. You know, and there's <laughs> levels of it, right? Like you don't want to have Elbrick show up, hey pals. Like, yeah, that's that's but you know, there's these characters. Much. <laughs> right. But there are characters with less lore significance that you can do that with. Matthew you know? faster than death. Well, I, I think he's probably a larger lore significance. Yeah, but but he's He's easily can be just mentioned. Like, oh, he was here. What, what was he doing here? He had a message. That was it. I mean, you could do that for sure. And you can yeah, you can pepper the world with little things like that. But again, you don't want to be careful not to overdo it. And what I want to do here is I want to use an example of, like, Marvel. Okay. And <laughs> well, try not to pass out with the eye roll, folks. I'm going somewhere with this, I swear. <laughs> it can be easily done at this point, right? Right. No, I'm not right. But like it would be one thing, right? You look at Dare- in fact, you look at Daredevil season one. Oh, nice. Okay, where they mention the incident in New York. Hmm. Yeah. Being you know Avengers one, Captain America doesn't fucking bump. Chris Evans didn't bump into Matt Murdock on the street and go, "Oops, sorry, I dropped my shield." Because <laughs> that would be stupid. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Matt Murdock picked up the shield for him because he knew exactly where it went and gave it to him. But you know, like how ridiculous right. yeah. having Matt Murdock show up as a lawyer defending another character. That's different. It right? It's in how it's used. It was a smart move. Yeah, right. But, you know, that arbitrary. Hey, everybody. Remember who Captain America is? Unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Right. Or to try to go, hey, we were old friends. Before you got blind while I was in a block of ice. Remember when we got coffee that didn't happen? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a stretch. I'm just thinking about having fun with the premise here, though. Um, but, but you get what I'm saying. Now, that said, you look at some of these books, you look at some of these lore characters. It might be faster than death is, it, is an interesting choice because he's a huge lore character, mm-hmm. right? And, you know, he, he's the one that allegedly cracks the curse and restores the ancestor spirits back to the sound striders. Now this is the end of the line shit. Mm-hmm. So not in your game. I but I, I apologize because I, I just picked a strider one because of the like the messenger aspect. Not of realizing it. the implication yeah, of what you just reason, unleashed yeah. on me. Yeah. Gave him like the biggest one. Right. <laughs> like you know the one on the cover of all the tribe books? <laughs> I just, it was the first strider that came to my mind. It's a I'm big sorry. name. I mean, it's understandable. I apologize. Shit. Well, you want to throw? I mean, if you want to throw more big names out there, you can do old man mini skins. I know, you, I know you were chomping at the bit. I to did, talk about but him. I don't want to because okay. that's just such a big meta character. He's been had his hands in everything. No, that's true, and that's fun to a level. But you know, like you look at say maybe the one arm pack or the, the severed arm pack. I always call it the one arm pack. That's incorrect. <laughs> you know, that's. How neat is it? Like, I read Breathe Deeply. I'm a big fan of these characters. I can drop them in a story. No, you shouldn't because they're in the Amazon. But <laughs> Unless your story's going to the Amazon. You know. And at least this was from my perspective at the time. You know, because, again, going through all this as it was happening. You know, I had, and you guys know, I got a bunch of rage cards. Yeah. I actually got more of them thanks to uh, one of our listeners. A huge shout out to, to our buddy Goat. That, that, that was amazing. Thank you. <laughs> it was pretty he, fucking cool he sent me a bunch cards. of doubles he had. He's like, here. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's, That's like, awesome. it's like a bunch of doubles. <laughs> like, I'm not fucking around. There's there's a lot of cards. I know you had the two decks already, and then to get, get significantly more cards. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot. And thank you so much. You're the, you're the, you're the man. Thank you. <laughs> Good friend of the show. Absolutely. But you're going back to go to, you know, I'll, you know, I had Rage coming up. I had played Rage. And... They released the book Warriors of the Apocalypse, which was a book that they gave the write-ups on these characters, like a bunch of these characters. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't, you know how these things are. They're expansions. They don't cover the expansions. It's what's, here's here's what this is. But these were all these characters that are in the world, and they're in other places. Gogol Fangs First is a rage card. Gogol Fangs First is in Rage Across the Amazon. The write-up's identical, by the way. It's the same Mm write-up. 
<laughs> oh, see, I didn't know it was the same one. Oh, I mean, word I for word. Imagine, oh, wow. I yeah. imagine it's similar, but word no, they, for they word. Just were, I mean, it's the same character. Right. Yeah. You know, the difference is fucking now it's in a collection of all these other people, like Blade Tooth or Grey Hunts the Hunter or Fang Jumper. And, you know, and those are just a few Geta Fenris that are in there, too. Mm-hmm. You know, Scarthroat Leech Killer. That's and, a cool that's name. That's a cool right. name. <laughs> and so, like, you know, here here you are looking through these cards and, oh, these are, this is cool art. Look at that awesome Rod Spencer art, right? And then you get this book and now you read about this character. And as a storyteller, how fun is that to be able to use that character a little bit? Mm-hmm. It's, you know, mm-hmm. Scarthroat Leech Killer isn't changing the world, but you know that character. And you get the little write-up on him, kind of like the NPC of the month, right? Where it's fun, <laughs> nice. it's fun just to use. And if you know that character, if a player knows that character, how fun is that for them? Right? It's just, it's fucking, it's a neat thing to do. It's a big deal. Right, yeah, it's a big now, deal, but on a small scale. CJ. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, and one little thing that could be a interesting take to do, or potentially a, fit, a pitfall, depending on who you do it, could use some of these characters to add just a little stake if your players know the meta plot. So, um, now, you don't want it to be like, you know, hey, you gotta go save this pack or this pack is in trouble, go help them, or their sept is in trouble. And you don't want to be, say, like, hey, yeah, no, we're gonna go save the kidnapped uh, Jonas Albrecht after he became king. That's, that's a little bit jumping the shark. <laughs> Yes, I would agree. <laughs> or one of the, uh, or any of the other characters who aren't like, you know, the high king of the Garu. One of these just named characters from the Rage game could be somebody to drop in. Yeah, maybe acts against the wall, your pack happens to be in the right place, right time, and gives them a hand. I love if, your character, if your players know the meta plot, then it's like, oh shit, we just did a thing. Like, for example, if you were in a Wild West game and inadvertently mm-hmm. assisted somebody who maybe would go on to find premium oil, found Ooh. premium oil, Ooh. Mm-hmm. for example, yeah, a random example. So my question is, we talk a lot about werewolf meta. What about bringing in current event meta, like that kind of stuff? Like you said, JFK assassination. What if somehow Garu is involved? You see, you see where I'm kind of getting at that? Like, real events, how close should we skitter to that? Ooh. I'm going to say that's an easier thing to do in the further back in time you go. Well, that's kind of what I was getting at when we were talking Wild West here. So it made me think of, yeah. like, current yeah. events that happened, well, for, like, for instance, in your Wild West game, you wouldn't be bringing Billy the Kid around. Or would you? Mm-hmm. I probably would not, but at the same time, depending on what time period exactly it's set in, I could imagine there being at least one or two Garu in, like, Custard's Last Stand going after the guy and maybe his wormish entourage, if he has one. Maybe there's something going on in the Umbra at the same time. Use it more for, like, a set piece versus having them be actually actively involved. It makes me think of... We look at the postmortems, and it's it's just a very small spoiler, but like the major event happened at a certain time, and you brought that into the game when we played it, the the snowstorm. Mm. So I can see stuff like that. But yeah, like the biggest thing that comes to mind, especially with like the JFK situation, like I would not have the players be involved, but like they see it on the TV or on the news. That might fuck up their plans going into, like, you know, go raid this police station because, you know, especially if your game is set in Texas, it's going to be police fucking everywhere immediately after that. So it could be used to, like, deter yeah, to deter or flavor the events of the world right now. But I probably would stay away from a lot of modern events just because that's also where you deal with potentially bringing politics into the game. And I'm, I'm, see, I'm right there with you, with you guys uh, in general. You know, Danny, you bring up like the the blizzard thing, and mm-hmm. that's that's an event in terms of weather, like a natural thing. Right. So yeah, like if there's like an earthquake or something, or a tornado, or some sort of natural disaster that happens to coincide with the era that you're running or the time that you're running, definitely use that because. But that's nature. That's mm-hmm. you know, that's a different thing. That's a much safer thing. Using JFK, again, is that example. I agree. I don't touch the assassination with a 12-foot pole. 
No. That's just why I was asking. It's like, how yeah. much life would but, you breathe into current event meta? But, like CJ brought up, I, I if I was playing a game in Texas, you know, set in Texas in that era, I would have it fuck things up. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not... Airports are now not an option. Yes. Like, you were supposed to do the mission, and now is a complication because of this thing that happened in the world. You know... And again, in a safe distance in the past. Mm-hmm. Now, now things are more difficult because yes, you know, there's a greater police presence, or there's more people, or everyone shut down because this thing happened. You're nowhere near it, but the whole world is watching this now. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I agree. In terms of more current events, I wouldn't touch them. You know what's fun is um, taking your escapism. In, in making it messagey <laughs> or going political with it or you know it's fun for is escaping in my escapism i want to be entertained i want to entertain other people and you don't want to real life it up yes you, you don't want to real life it up yeah. you can real life after this <laughs> you know you go well I, maybe i want to read something that does with current events well then it's called a newspaper you should do that instead I was just curious because it's no, like, no, no, no. It's a, everybody, it's a good question. Yeah, because everybody puts their games in timepieces, so things happen and they have ripple mm-hmm. effects, just like if right when when Morning Kill died, it's and, the same thing. And you know, it, it's something that that White Wolf had done largely in, in the past, which I thought was really great. Is like when nine eleven happened, that had to be addressed, mm-hmm. and you know, so they made it clear that no, a mage didn't do it. This wasn't vampires, or no. This was just a shitty thing that happened and sick people did it and let's leave the world of darkness out of it. It was smart. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's it was something they had also done for World War Two. So far, every splat that has ever touched upon a setting in World War Two or had characters from that, it has been explicitly stated Hitler was a human. One hundred percent. No supernaturals were like directly involved with his choices, his decisions. He was just a sick monster, and everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. And it's it's the smart way to do it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's I think gum it up if you do that. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be that. Right. Like if you're going to use, and you don't have to use the real life events, of course. But if you're mm-hmm. going to, I, I think it's it's best to, again, not deal with it directly, but have the repercussions. Hit you from from like a like the hit up from the side yeah, again like, like you know it's indirect the, approach right the the airport that you needed to get to is now closed mm, yes you know the train stations can't use those either right. like any kind of motor travel is all shut down yeah, I think a great example like from real world is when I lived in Boston or near Boston and it wasn't specific you don't need to know my address shut up mm. um, <laughs> one two three Help Street right you know I was I was like ten minutes away from where the New England Patriots play. But, you know, the problem here is that whenever there was a game or a concert or whatever. You were gridlocked. You, well, not only that, but they closed down roads all over the place mm-hmm. to allow uh, the fucking stadium goers entry and exit. Mm. So, for example, if you needed to go to the grocery store <laughs> and weren't aware that there was a concert, you might not be able to get to the grocery store because the road is closed in your direction so people can leave mm-hmm. the stadium and you can sit there and wait for two hours for us to open that road again, or just turn around and not have food fun. I bring that up because shit like that, you know, a small scale thing, like a concert, fine, but you know, a, a presidential motorcade or, you know, I mean, it's at that point, the same as construction, but if you're bumping up, if you're choosing to bump up against that, maybe you're playing a political game where, Candidate X, because it doesn't have to be real life at this point. Mm-hmm. Remember, well, the darkness is not our world. It's just very mm-hmm. similar. It's similar. It's a shittier similar. Right? So maybe it's like a mayoral candidate that's actually a kinfolk. Well, that's, that's a cool idea. Right? That's going to do great things for the nation because he's aware that he's a kinfolk. But you've got to protect him, you know, because <laughs> so is the enemy's aware too. You know, so you got to get go- into a position of power. So, yeah. Right. So, you know, maybe you're going to the rally, the big rally or whatever. And, you know, there's going to be assassin. You took your car, but oops, the road's closed. So fuck, now what? Hmm. Well, do we, what do we do? Do we just, we put the car in park in the middle of this intersection 
and shift to the Umbra and sit in the rear view mirror and can't do that. <laughs> can't get out of the car and shift the lupus. What are we going to do? The other problem is once you get there, where do you actually watch him from? Where do you try to protect him from? Because you really going to be around all those people and cameras and both video mm-hmm. and flashy because annoying. <laughs> yeah. But see, there's again, an example of taking it even in a smaller scale, mm-hmm. uh, not even a real world. But again, that, that side repercussion, I think is the better way to do that. No, no. What if you want to go something that's like still meta pushed, but it could go either way. And then it's going to be depending on storyteller at that point. We look at the Shadow Lords, and we mentioned the Margrave earlier. Yes. Where do you draw that line? We Interacting know, with the Margrave or well, yeah, well, working not a, for the Margrave? Not only that, but we know that the Shadow Lords, I guess it depends on Storyteller, too, because they're pushing for that power, or are they holding back for the power, waiting for the Silver Fangs to just fuck up? Well, I mean, okay. And I think there's a level of case by case basis there. But again, talking about the Margrave, right. that's a large part of the meta right there too. And it, that's why I bring it up because, as a storyteller, knowing what the meta is, how far do you push it compared to what someone else would do? Well, obviously, mm-hmm. storyteller discretion there. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, you know, well, forget me right now. Sure. You know, just to touch down on the Margrave and all that meta is, you know, the Margrave is, um, we would argue, the leader of the Shadow Lords. Mm hmm. Right uh, over at the Scepter of the Night Sky, which again I don't believe is detailed fucking anywhere, and that's so irritating to me. <laughs> that's sad. Right, I don't even know he was in his pack. That's that's how much we know. Oh, right, that's even more sad. Um, but he is responsible for founding and controlling the European Coalition. You know, he is unified the bulk of the tribes over in Europe to great effect, and is doing great things. Like one would argue, uh, this is arguable, mind you. That while Albrecht is doing great things over in North America with the tribes and is totally leading the nation over there, that Margrave is doing the same thing, possibly even to greater effect over in the old country. Mm-hmm. Now, it's not to say that he's the only person in power. You know, you, ha- you have various, I mean, there's, there's, there's so many meta characters, you know, Queen Tamara, uh, Tamara Queen Tamara, mm-hmm. you know, uh, is, is arguably the big power of the Silver Fangs in the old country. But again, Margaret is kind of running the show with the coalition, which the Silver Fangs are not a part of. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I mean, you have the ability there to decide how far to push that. And that's why I bring it up. Yeah. And this is where you could take that meta and tweak it and bring your own into it, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. in your world, the European coalition fails. Maybe, you know, the Silver Fangs acquiesce over in the old country. Hmm. Maybe Albrecht gets uh, it's a little jealous because he measured and was like, I'm sad. My main character syndrome <laughs> isn't big enough. And I'm going to go to the maybe, old- Or maybe the Margrave's like, hey, let's go help out the Americans. Also possible. Either, but I mean, that's the thing is you can do whatever you want with it. But, you know, you have those you have the meta plot there to guide. Yeah, I, I like that version because that's one of those situations where it could go either way. And you're not fucking anything up as long as it's for your game. Right. You know, you look at other things in terms of meta, because again, we sat on that for a while Mm -hmm. (laughs) on the Margrave. Mm -hmm. But you also have neat shit, you know, like, um, and I don't want to talk about like antagonists and all that, because all of it, I mean, we could say all of it, right? But it's not what we're doing. But how about uh, the Bunyip 12? Hmm? Ah. Which, you know, is a favorite topic of mine insofar as it, it brings up, much like uh, DNA, mm-hmm. brings up the topic of the Garu gene, which both does and does not exist. <laughs> and again, another one of those where, which way do you push it? Well, and also, yeah, um, this is another thing that, you know, it's it's one of those topics that would come up in the Discord every now and then, mm-hmm. which you can find at uh, the link to at our website, Rage Across the Internet. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. Perfect. Every now and then. It's one of those conversations that, that seems to repeat. It becomes a big deal every now and then. Mm-hmm. It irritates me every time because we solved it every time. <laughs> and, uh, well, but but it comes in. just didn't hear it the first time. Well, no, but it comes into this thing that for some reason I didn't consider the first couple of times of all of them. <laughs> is again, how many people started with 20? 
Oh, I'm mm. sure a ton. You know, we took it, we look at a world of rage slash rage across the world, uh, the whole Metis versus Metis issue. Uh, now, page mm. eight, I don't want to make a whole meal out of it, obviously. Uh-huh. People are like, well, but the Metis are named after. No, that's the Metis. This is the Metis. And, and 20 years ago, this was addressed and solved in a world of rage or rage across the world. Mm-hmm. One of those books. Well, it's one of the two, and they, they right. say it straight up. Yeah, it, it's like page eight. It, there's a little text box. They address it right there. Here it is. This is the one thing. This is the other thing. Let's, sh- boom, put it to bed. But how many people never saw that book because they started with 20? Oh, I'm sure. Like I said, oh, it's got to be a ton. That's why it became relevant. Right. How many people, you know, you look at, um, they talk about the, the issue, and this has always been a big one, about genitals and crinos form settled in the fact that the frequently asked questions in storytellers three answered there 20 <laughs> something years ago yeah, almost has an old book right but again how many people never saw that but it's already been issued it's already been addressed we don't have to have this conversation ever because it's already been addressed possibly before you were born but mm-hmm. there it is also black and besides white. the artwork well, that's and I'm talking official artwork, not right, but what you someone know, else wants to draw. Yeah, but here's the thing: is you're gonna you're gonna look through W two, and you're gonna see Glabros or Crass. You're gonna see some artwork contradicting the meta. Right, that's gonna happen. You're gonna find it. I promise you, you're going mm-hmm. to find it. Mm-hmm. So you can't even that argument will fail because I can pluck out examples right now. I know of some examples. Yeah, yeah. but there's some Ron Spencer art. Mm-hmm. I'd argue those were probably Glabro, but neither here nor there. Right. But they were. Not the point. Still contradicts it, so it's fine. It's, it's, well, it, it doesn't there, but... <laughs> but there's the some that does. Is, yes, yes, there's plenty that does. Yeah. You know, it's the same thing we've talked about with Pentex being on the sides of Vans in our work. Yeah. That's for the sake of the mm. artwork. Yes. Fair. It's just to let you know that that's what that is. Right. But if this were a story, that wouldn't be there, because that defeats the purpose of what Pentex does. Please, please. I do have one question for uh, Metaplot, especially since we brought up art. I know in most of the core books, especially in like the drama and the rules sections, there is that fight between Jonas and Mari, right? Yes. I, I'm so is glad. Is there any extra agree. like context that you know about off the top of your head? Yes, there is, as a matter of fact. That story and that, the, that art shows up in first edition, second edition, and 20th. It's not in revised. Revised is a fight between a sound strider and a, uh, a sound strider, a window and a nexus crawler. Too interesting. Weird. It's okay. pretty neat. I'm going to have to go look that <laughs> art up. I forget about that one. Yes, yeah, so it's good art. But that fight, it's, it's iconic to Werewolf. Yeah. And what that is, is that is the story because when you meet, you open up W2, you know, and you meet Evan, and Evan bumps into Albert and makes him drop his booze. <laughs> And he decides to help the kid. He's like, we're going to take him to Mari. And Albrecht and Mari hate each other. Right from Jump Street. Yes. They know each other. They hate each other. They have a past. Mm. I didn't know they had a past. That is the past. That story through that drama section is the story of how they met. He was on her. He was in her territory. And she attacked defending her territory. That's kind of awesome. They have a history. So, of course, they see each other again. That history still needs hashed out. <laughs> yep. And it's something that we get to see in action. Yes. And again, how important is that? Because mm-hmm. they are the important men of plot characters. Right. So it's so cool to flip through that and watch that fight happen. Also, sidebar, in the combat section where it gives the example of how combat goes, mm-hmm. also deals mm-hmm. with that pack. Oh, nice. Okay. Yep. It's not relevant. It's just that they're in a warehouse doing a fight thing. But it's, there they are. Hmm. Neat. No, I'm super glad you brought that up. I think it's a shame. I know, like I said, in, in Revised, they used a different fight, which different art. It was really neat. You know, and I'm glad to see the change of pace. That was cool. And of course, for 20, they went back to the original because it's so iconic and significant. Right. Uh, and I know in 5, what they did as um, they kind of cloned the fight, except they changed the characters and just made them generic people. Mm. which I think is kind of a bummer. You know, if, if you were going to do the same thing, why don't we just show respect to what came before and include the original fight instead of mm-hmm. like doing a Kmart version of it. And now it's just some interesting fight art where in the past, it had all that extra context and yes, meta plot behind it and lore. 
Yeah. Like again, cause you, like you brought up and now there's a neat story behind that. That's, that's the significant encounter. Mm-hmm. How cool is that? Be fucking dope to be honest. Another thing that I could bring up for Metaplot is uh, using old Metaplot specifically for like the older settings. The thing I will specify is in the Wild West games, the Storm Eater, the big set piece, the big bad of that setting is noted to have been sealed away again. Not killed, not destroyed, not sent back to Malpheus, but just sealed away at the end of that. Hmm. What if that thing started breaking free in modern day? Do not quote me hmm? because it is a book that I have probably opened six times and have skipped to the end of the fucking book <laughs> six times. <laughs> Just to get the information. Yeah. Because it's a book game. Okay. But I believe the Storm Eater is mentioned or related to the plot of Past Lives, which is okay. not the book I thought it would be. I was so angry. You thought that was going to bring up more history for the Medicare? I didn't know it was a book game. Oh. I thought it was a book about how past lives work and ancestors and working which, with that. Which, great. That's probably what it should have been. That's what I wanted when I ordered the book. And yeah. that is not the book that showed up. So I was upset. Sad. <laughs> Can imagine why. Yeah. yeah. Now, was that my fault for not reading the description? Yes. Probably. But would I have bought the book anyway? Well, of course. Eventually. Gotta have the collection. Yeah. Well, and it was at the end of the line. Right. It was one of the last books released, and it was also, and this actually got brought up recently, was the first instance where they put out any gifts for the White Howlers and the Lost Breeds. Oh, wow. Okay. It was the end of the line. They're like, just fuck it. We can do whatever. Yeah. yeah. I get it. So it had Croton, Bunyip, and, and White Howler gifts. It, mm-hmm. it talked about the Apis, the ground. Like, it talked about, you know, the three Lost Breeds. It was there was a conversation. Mm-hmm. Some they were talking about um, all the different lost breeds that were the fair that were brought up mentioned once somewhere, <laughs> like the otters, <laughs> like the otters, you know. And, and like I had to point out that well, guys, you got to remember is that until, and I believe it's Silver Record, which again is a revised era book, closer to the end, not the end, but maybe midway. Mm-hmm. I, I think. Mm-hmm. We didn't have official anything on the Lost Breeds. So anything that was brought up and passing in different books was just, it was kind of like throwing pot, throwing shit at the wall and see what sticks. See yeah. what the audience likes. Or what they decide to roll with. Right. You know, like, so it's like, but they said, where otters? Well, it's like, maybe if there's not an official write up anywhere or a further mention of it, maybe it's not a real thing. Maybe it was something that it they might- threw in either as a joke or a tongue in cheek thing. And that can be that. Because otherwise, there something would be the right. editor forgot. Right. <laughs> because again, back then there wasn't. You know, we we didn't. And again, I, I believe it was the first time mentioned was silver for, silver record, and it was in so far as the glyph section. Hmm. And then past Never lives. Again. Oh, then past lives. Okay. It wasn't until changing breeds twenty that there were official write ups for those breeds. Hmm. So it's like, maybe those were just, we shouldn't worry about those. And those aren't real things, but it's what reminded me is, you know, past lives. That's where that started. And it was at or the where end the, of the gifts line. were. Yeah. yeah. I'm, st- I'm still sad. It wasn't the book you wanted it to be. Cause that would have been a good book. Yeah, I would have loved that book. Yeah. You'd been able to do some serious work with that one. Well, I think, I think past lives slash ancestors, whichever edition you want to call it. Cause mm-hmm. it's the same thing. They just renamed it. Oh, same background. Oh, of course. <laughs> Um, yeah. Well, I think it was the idea was that past lives was a little misleading because again, it's the same thing. Yeah. You know, it's one of those ideas that it's it's very important to the overall narrative of the Garo Nation, but ultimately isn't well defined practically. Mm. But I mean, that's that is a different issue for a different day. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure we could do something with those concepts. That another day though. Another day though. <laughs> In the meantime, you know, definitely if you have um, the chance, you know, make sure me look through those books, look through those old source books, look at those characters that are brought in. You know, um, there's interesting shit you can do. There are story seeds that, that you can find there that you can use in your games. You know, um, if you get a hold of Warriors of the Apocalypse. That's a cool one. Yeah, well, I mean, again, that, that book is just the characters just from the characters. first rage. And there's, 
you know, it's it's got it's every tribe. There's some good characters in there. There's some, you know, it's pre Margrave, but Evan and Mari, you know, um, and Albrecht are in there. You know, she, definitely a good source of like Inspirato for deed names. Certainly, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Certainly. There, there's even some Farah in there. There's some Pentex officials in there. There's a couple spirals. There's an abomination or two in there. And hey, if you guys okay. don't, if you guys don't have those books, you go pick them up and use our affiliate link on our website for Drive Through RPG. Yep, we Which don't mention a, that one enough. No, we don't. It's a good way to help us out. It, it it sends a store credit. Yep, doesn't cost you anything. Yep, not not a dime extra out of your pocket, but they give us a little kickback because you use the link, which is good. Helps us with books. If we need to replace a thing, and uh, it's been a long time since we did a giveaway, but if we get the balance there in a place that I like, we can probably get another oh, yeah. giveaway going out. Sure. We we did before, like first yeah. year. We did a giveaway for store credit, and it's been way too long. I don't see why mm-hmm. we wouldn't. Um, also, speaking of supporting us, we do have our Ko-Fi, ko-fi.com slash rage across the internet where we have our tiers where you can donate to us. If you are in a position to do so, we'd very much appreciate it. We have some, what we think are pretty great uh, rewards as thank you, as a thank you for, for those. You know, our NPC of the Month Club, our post-mortem series, we have backer hangout night, and those are all things, you know, exclusive to, to you know, our, our dear, dear backers. Yeah, getting to join in on the game team where probably catch me and Porter hanging out and playing games like DVD on the regular. Most nights. <laughs> Most, yeah. yep. No, I, I try to carve out at least an hour or two. As busy as, you know, something just mm-hmm. fucking keep us sane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's the game you pick to keep you sane. But yeah, it's hey. a bad choice. That's about to say murdering <laughs> thing. Yeah. No, it's not even murdering. It's it's <laughs> other people. <Yeah>. But. <laughs> it's also a good outlet to express your rage in ways. That <laughs> but maybe that's Creative ways. Too. Creative ways. Because yeah. there's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But anyway, um, if you're not in a position where you can support us or help financially, we totally understand. Times are tough. Maybe you just don't want to. Which, mm, come on, be cool. But if, if you're not in a position where you can't, we totally get it, and we respect that. We respect your time, your money. But maybe if you still want to help, word of mouth, reviews, shares, likes, yep, anything to help get the message out. We're on every social media platform. Sort of. No, well, I mean, the we're, big no, we're not. Three. The big three. I, you know, Are they still the big three? That. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. But you can find us on Twitter. You find us on Facebook. Both of those are true. Th- those are both true, yes. We but- don't use them often because we don't like them. But we do have them. <laughs> and we have a website, which we've talked about before, and that's Rage Across the Internet. Dot com. Dot com. Dot com. And again, that's where our Discord link is, and our Discord's a good place to hang out, yeah, a good place for source of inspirato, just general bullshitting. We we pop in when we as often as we can. Yeah, we're, we're often, there. Yep. And mm-hmm. you can always email us too if you don't want to do any of that stuff. Oh my god. We, we haven't have used an that email in a long time. We have an email. That's, oh wow. Yeah. It's in the show notes. It is in the show notes. Yeah, all this stuff is in the show that's notes. Yes. But that's uh, Rage Across Podcast at gmail.com. Correct. That said, it's weird we're doing this at the end now. <laughs> well, we got so into it. Yeah, no, that's a lot true. Of fun. We, we just hit the ground forgot. running in yeah, we, this. We hit this at random intervals, this, this, this shilling thing. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> random spots. We'll be the middle of the thing. show. We always hope that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yes, um, that is about our time. So we want to, you know, on behalf of myself, Fucking Danny Tyson, CJ, Tommy Dixon. We want to say thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your support. It, it means the world to us. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Keep your claws sharp and your head in a swivel. We'll see you. We can be bought. Absolutely, we can be bought. (laughs)